Hello, it's 2.29 a.m. on the morning of February 1st, 2018, which just so happens to be the exact moment of maximum eclipse, lunar eclipse, that is, of course. So I thought I'd get out my video camera, which has a 20 times zoom, and try and film it. And it also has a pretty decent night mode, which is what I'm using now. And I also discovered it has an infrared mode with a huge infrared LED on the front of it, which I didn't even know. Oh, I can see stars here too. That's nice. Anyway, um, it turned out to be not a very exciting video because, as you can see here, it basically just looks like a normal full moon, except it's very, very dim. Uh, it looks kind of bright in this video, but to look at it in person, it's very, very dim. It looks like it's behind clouds, even when it's not. I don't think it is. Well, okay, as soon as I say that, some clouds come through. And you can see, by the way, these, um... Oh, damn, that's a lot of cloud. Uh, okay. Well, you can see, by the way, that the frames were moving very slowly there, that this night mode, I think what it does is it takes, like, the average of the last few frames and sort of adds them all together to make a brighter image. Come on! Jeez, as soon as you start to try and make a video. Anyway, so, um, yeah, it's uh, very susceptible to movement, so I have to be very, very careful not to move the camera so that all of those pixel values get added up in the same place and they add up to make a nice picture. Let me just come back when this moon comes back, hey? Okay, that's a bit better. I actually don't think that was very much cloud at all, but it doesn't take much cloud to obscure it because it's so dim. Um, anyway, the other obvious thing that you've probably noticed from what you're seeing here is that the moon, as well as being dim, is it's actually taken on a very pinky orange hue. Uh, so it's what they call a blood moon. I wouldn't go so far as to call it red, but it is definitely not the normal colour of the moon that you see, which is basically pretty much white. Silvery white, isn't it? Oh, here comes some more cloud again. Um, yeah, but uh, this this is not something that my camera is doing. Um, I'll show you the infrared mode in a, in a minute, but what we're seeing here is the actual colour that I'm seeing in reality. So it is, it definitely is very pinkish. Here's what the infrared mode looks like. I didn't really want to have to show you this too much because obviously it messes up the colours. It's not supposed to look that green in real life. Uh, but you can see we're back to normal 60 frames per second recording, so that's quite good. It helps it to focus a lot quicker when it's uh, reading in more frames per second. Uh, and it's also quite good at seeing through the clouds. Uh, how does it know what I'm, what I'm saying? Look at this. <laughs> now we can't see anything again. Okay, there we go. But what I was about to say was that it does let you see through the clouds slightly better than the other mode does. This is what it looks like when you're filming with the normal mode of the camera, so not night vision or anything special. Um, and as you can see, it's much dimmer. This is actually more representative of what it looks like in real life. It's about this dim and you can see the camera is struggling there, it looks a bit grainy. Seems to be illuminated more on the top than the bottom. Oh, there goes those clouds again. Great. Hmm, I got a bit bored of looking at the moon. It actually takes quite a long time to change through all that uh, whole cycle. Now I'm just playing around with my camera, but I realized that uh, it could actually see stars kind of okay. Oh, as soon as I turn it on it sort of loses it, but this is the Southern Cross here, I believe. It's supposed to be pointing south, but I guess it does. Yeah, mostly pointing south. Um, and I also saw three shooting stars, so I thought I'd leave my camera running for a little bit, just in the vain hope that I might actually be able to capture one on video, but uh, they sort of move very quickly, <laughs> obviously, and I don't think the way that this camera does its additive blending of the frames it would actually be able to catch it, but I um, thought I'd give it a try anyway. The other thing that I thought I might try and video, which I can't, is this kind of a Milky Way sort of a... It's like a cloud of stars that's so fine that you can't see individual stars very well. It's, it's not a cloud, I know it's not a cloud, because the clouds have all cleared, uh, at least where I'm looking. But it's sort of a... 
sort of it looks like a galaxy or a Milky Way or something. It's all just sort of spread out across the sky. It's quite beautiful. And uh, pretty sure I couldn't see anything like this when I lived in Tokyo. But here in the middle of nowhere in rural New Zealand, it's a different story. It's quite mesmerizing. There's the fourth one. I see four shooting stars in, in like one hour. It's not too bad. Okay, now the moon is starting to come out from behind the shadow of the earth and I think I'm going to have to switch into the infrared mode because you can see it's a lot brighter now. Well, it's changing quickly, isn't it? Oh, no, it's not really changing that quickly, but it's just the way the clouds get in front of it adjusts the brightness in a inconsistent kind of a way. Um, oh look, it's a little bit pink on the bottom, but it's completely white on the top. Huh. I didn't notice that when it was um, in the first phase because there was just too much cloud. Even now it's not very good, but uh, it's better than it was before. Okay, we're back in the infrared mode again, and this sort of gives you a little bit better idea of how things are unfolding, I think. Uh, uh, it's still, it's quite a difficult thing, even for this camera to film. Just the contrast between that bright patch and the rest of the frame is so extreme. Hmm, I think at this point the best way to film it is just with no night mode at all, just with normal camera. That doesn't look too bad. It still completely washed out the, the bright part though. Okay, well I think I might have to leave it here. There's a forecast for rain tomorrow and some pretty thick clouds starting to move in and I'm only getting a little peep of the moon every now and then. You can see it's mostly back to its normal state anyway. So I think we'll just finish up now. Um, and in closing I'd just like to thank all of the flat earth scientists who bring us these amazing predictions and let us know years in advance when things like this are going to happen right down to the very minute. It's pretty amazing how they do that. Oh, wait a minute. No, flat earth models not only do not let us predict anything, they don't even match with reality. What am I talking about? <laughs> oh well. Thanks for watching.